three of the flattest pitches we've seen for a very, very long time. Even this one, it didn't spin today, did it? And we're on day four. Did any of the pitches do anything really throughout? And we only sort of pumped it up a little bit because the odd one spun after Al Pindi. We're like, oh, this is going to turn. So for them to get 20 wickets three times on a row and win three games and to get the rate of runs, as Stuart was saying earlier, to buy them time to get 20 wickets was incredible, really. They set the tone in Pindi with 504 and 75 overs. That won them a test that I don't think any other side or any other captain would have won on that pitch. Don't think that was possible without Stokes and that batting lineup. And that set the template for the rest of the tour. Pakistan just could not keep up with them. 3 0 on these pitches. And without Broad and Anderson in this one, they haven't won for a long time without Broad and Anderson. It shows the depth in English cricket and with an 18 year old coming in. <laughs> I mean, everything they've touched has just turned to gold on this tour. Michael, you were in Hobart when Ollie Robinson was backing away and England got completely obliterated. Then in the Caribbean, with that defeat, Joe Root standing down. No coach, no chief executive, no chairman, all of that sort of stuff. And now you're standing on the outfield in Karachi. They've won all those test matches in the summer and now this clean sweep. What an extraordinary turnaround. It is an incredible transformation really I can't think uh, both in English cricketing terms and indeed more recently in general sporting terms uh, of a more rapid turnaround um, and the value of, of leadership obviously things had to change uh, in April that was clear but I don't think anybody could have guessed uh, how quickly the transformation will come so well done to Rob Key for, for making this marriage in heaven, as I turned it to Ben <laughs> Stokes. Ben Stokes and Brenda McCollum bringing them together. Um, and that was the, the catalyst, clearly. Uh, it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it, when you say that teams take on characteristics of good captains. But cliches are, are grounded in some kind of truth. And I think here you see this team taking on Ben Stokes' characteristics in two ways. One is the aggression. You're playing on the front foot, going at the opposition, trying to put the opposition under pressure. The second one that's really underestimated is a selflessness, and which is easy, easier to do if you've played 70, 80, 90 test matches or more, as, as Stuart has and, and Jimmy has. But if you're playing your first, that's more difficult. And think of Will Jack's first test match in Pindi. just comes out in the second innings or first innings and slogs three sixes, you know, and, and he gives his wicket away. A complete selflessness, really. Rayan Ahmed last night, given the instruction at number three to go and finish the game in the overs uh, remaining, and, you know, hits his first ball for four and then gets out on the charge. Ollie Pope asked to keep wicket in the second test match. You know, I can think of some people who might have said, well, you know, it's going to affect my batting or, I'm, you know, I've got my place at number three um, settled and it's going to affect my batting. But no, he did that, even though he had to borrow Ben Folks' gloves. He forgot his own gloves on tour. <laughs> so there's an element of selflessness there, which is, uh, which is amazing, really, and, and, and fantastic to see. It's been a great tour. Um, and fittingly finished by Ben Duckett, who's had an incredible return to the England test team. It's interesting listening to Brendan Mark talking about Ben Stokes and he said his man management superb and also consistent messaging. How important mm. is that? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, there is, there is no hint of confusion there, is there? Um, you know, the, the bowlers, uh, the 20, 20 wicket taking and putting time back in the game. It's not only the batting side of the, the unit that has been putting time back into the game, it's the bowlers as well. Yeah. Because they, they've had to kind of go, all right, well, we're going to keep these catches in, which means I might go for more boundaries. I might go for more runs. I will not be going at, at two and a half and over. I might be going at three and a half and over. But in doing so, in allowing the opposition to be able to score a little bit faster, that also is putting time back into the game. But it's also creating more chances for you to take wickets. So all of these things, are, as, as Michael says, completely selfless. Not one person has mentioned an average. An average. Not one person has mentioned anybody's individual stats. You know, all of those things have gone out the window because, because the, the whole i.e. The, the victory is more important than the individuals making runs within that or who is making the runs within that in order to secure the victory. The team wins and the team loses or the team, well, they don't draw, but you know what I mean? The whole thing is, that, is, is about what the whole is doing 
rather than singling out individuals, uh, individual glory in the whole thing. And you ask Ben or you ask Brenda McCullum to take any credit whatsoever themselves and they won't. Mm. You know, they're not interested in that. It's about what we do as, as a team. And that messaging is absolutely singular from all of them. It's been, it's been wonderful to watch. It really has. But how much easier is it to get uh, the clarity and the message across to your players when there's, the selections are more consistent? You know, thinking back to... A couple of years previous, obviously, COVID bubbles and rotation and players flying home. But we had an incredible amount of changes to the team all the time. Um, whereas actually Stokes and Brenda have come in and say, OK, we're going to stick to quite a, a, a settled team. Um, and there's not been a huge amount of changes throughout the, the 10 test matches. So then the messaging sinks in quicker because the players are hearing it more often and more regularly. And I suppose another way of getting rid of a fear of failure or another way of explaining it would be a fear of getting dropped is that you back your players you say you're the best player for this job um, and we we believe you will succeed and go and go and play without fear and play in a relaxed manner and and you will you will come off you still dark about Barbados then is this what no, no, I about that. <laughs> <laughs> have you thought can you it think is. back to say during the summer not necessarily in, in this series because you know you, you've been here with us but where there was a danger of a player taking a backward step and the encouragement came from either the captain or the coach, said, no, no, push forward. What, was there a moment this summer that I can well, think yeah, of? Any, uh, I mean, any I, occasion. I suppose Trent Bridge uh, was, was the highlight of that in the fact we got to T. I can't remember the exact scores. I think we were four down um, Johnny and, and Stokesy mm. batting. And just at T, there was a question mark of... What if we lose one or two more? What's the scenario of the game? Do we then shut up shop and go for the draw? And Brendan just called everyone into the changing room uh, and spoke very briefly, but just said, with everything we've got, with every single player, we go for the win until the last ball. So at no stage do we ever think about the draw in our minds. Up until Jimmy coming in, even if we need 70, Jimmy, you try and hit the ball to the boundary and go for the win. So I suppose that was a question from the team of what was that second test match in? At what stage do we look to go for the draw? Mm -hmm. And Brendan just went, at no stage do we look for the draw. And then first ball after T, bouncer, Johnny ducks it. Stokes, he went, why are you ducking that? Hit it for six. And then Johnny just went ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose that was, that, that was probably the moment of ultimate clarity that we're going for the win we're going to entertain these people haven't bought day five tickets to watch us block it for an hour they want to see us at fours and sixes